I've been having a bit of a challenging time recently. I know a lot of you probably have no idea about my other channels and the big changes I've made over the last few months, and I won't bore you with the details. But long story short, my whole operation is in the red. We're bleeding money. For non-business people like myself, that means more money is leaving the business than is coming in, and that's not great. Speaking of money, before I get to the rest of the video, let me quickly thank this week's sponsor, Audio. One of the most common questions I get asked is, where do I find music to use in my videos? There are a number of options out there, but the one I've been using for a while now, and the one that I feel is the best bang for your buck, is audio. There are a couple things that set them apart. For one, the price. Nothing comes close to audio in that regard. Their lifetime membership is the same cost as some services annual plan. But beyond that, they have an amazing library of tracks, with more being added all the time. And critically, they also have a massive catalog of sound effects, which makes such a big difference in how a video feels. Good music and sound effects are a cheat code for making the viewer feel a certain way. They're the key to pacing, feel, and emotional impact. If you're not sold already, Audio also has an amazing new feature called Link Match AI. This is something I've been waiting for my entire career. I can't begin to tell you the number of times I've heard a song and been like, that's the one, that's the track I want to use. But it's copyrighted. With Link Match, you copy the link to the song, plug it in, and it analyzes the entire audio library and gives you the closest matches. This is such a time saver. I've got creator friends who switched to audio for this feature alone. There are plenty of other options out there, but personally, I cannot recommend audio highly enough. As a little thank you to fans of my work, Audio is currently offering 70% off your first year of the Pro Plan when you use the code CHAPMAN70 at checkout. Give it a try. I promise you'll love it as much as I do. Okay, back to the video. In our modern society, it's second nature to equate our financial stability with success or failure. If you're earning more money than you did last year, you're winning. You're a successful person. If you're making less, or you lost your job, or your business is just kind of treading water, you're losing. You're a failure. Just about anyone who works a creative job will tell you that the calculus has to be a little different than with a traditional 9 to 5. Most creative work is piecemeal. You're a contractor or a freelancer. There aren't many companies hiring full-time graphic designers or voice actors. But despite the fact that we all understand this, it's still really hard not to feel like a failure when things aren't going your way. I'm guilty of this myself. At time of writing, I just finished looking at the finances with Kelsey, and I immediately started spiraling. I can't keep doing this. How can I possibly solve these problems? I'm a failure. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was an average person. They did everything right, and nothing bad ever happened. The end. That's not a very compelling story. Throughout all of human history, the one thing that literally everyone has experienced, well, is death. But besides that, the other thing we've all experienced is failure. Making a mistake, something not going our way, a business going under, a relationship falling apart. The scale of these failures might vary from person to person, but every single human being on Earth has experienced a failure of some kind. Now, this isn't me saying, everybody fails at something, get over it. This is me trying to offer a little perspective for when you're feeling down. It's the same perspective I try to keep in mind when I start to feel like I'm a loser, or that my work doesn't matter, or that I'm not good enough. What makes our lives, our story, worth living is overcoming these failures. And that doesn't always have to look like a glorious triumph over adversity, it could just mean accepting that a project didn't work out and moving on to the next thing. But that moving on part is key. Wallowing never solved anything. It doesn't even help us feel better about the thing we're wallowing over. Allowing a short period to feel sorry for yourself or stress about some perceived failure is fine, even healthy. But what you do next is what counts. Take me, for example. I run this channel, Second Thought, First Thought, and The Deprogram. I write all my scripts. I do all the on-camera stuff for three channels. I coordinate with sponsors for First Thought. I edit every episode of The Deprogram. I do live Q&As on the Second Thought Discord. I maintain four Patreon accounts, manage perks, and handle problems for hundreds of patrons. I offer video consulting services on the side. And still, with all that work, my business is losing money. That feels like a punch in the gut because I can't fit a single additional piece of work on my plate. I'm at my capacity. And this is on top of trying to be a good husband and father. It's exhausting. And sometimes, like right now with how the money is trending, it's scary. When you're confronted with a reality like this, it's so easy to tie your sense of self-worth to the success of your projects. This is a societal problem, the whole Protestant work ethic thing. 
If you're struggling financially, it's because of some moral shortcoming. That's deeply ingrained in Western culture, and it's incredibly unhealthy. It also doesn't really apply to 21st century life. I know plenty of people who work even harder than I do who are in a far more precarious position than I am. That's just the nature of work these days. It's really hard to make a living, even if you've got the best work ethic in the world. So back to that story I told you. The one where nothing bad happened and the hero just coasted through life. This may just be me, but that sounds like a pretty dull life. Without challenges, without adversity, how do we know what we're capable of? All the best stories follow characters who are in way over their heads. The problems they face drive the story forward, and we watch them learn and grow and become better each time they overcome a setback or a challenge or a failure. These stories are compelling to us because we can all relate to them. There's nothing exciting or fulfilling about a life of extreme leisure and stability, free of challenges and obstacles. Why even exist at that point? Of course, that's not to fetishize a life of overwhelming precarity, either. The extremes of stable luxury and constant hardship are both damaging to what it means to be human. Someone who's never faced a problem has never had the opportunity to grow, to learn, to be introspective about what happened and why. Someone who's constantly having to worry about where their next meal is going to come from won't have the opportunity to let their guard down, process their trauma, and feel proud of how much they've managed to overcome. But for most of us, we're somewhere in the middle. We have a fridge and a TV, but we also have bills and a job that's probably not as secure as we'd like. That's especially true of creative types who have to rely on unpredictable demand for our services and skills. When we have a bad month or our business starts to slump, that's when we have a choice. We can give in to those negative thoughts. We can shut out the world and just stew in our self-pity and worry. Or we can continue to do the best we can, knowing that sometimes things just don't work out. Maybe there's no salvaging this particular chapter in your story. But you're still alive. You're still living that story. What happens in the next chapter is up to you. It may not be what you expected. It may be absolutely miserable for a while but it will also reveal things about yourself that you may not have realized, or that you were able to ignore when times were good. For me, when I'm feeling like a failure, I think to myself, okay, fine, let's imagine everything fell apart. YouTube deleted my channels and I have no way to make money the way I do now. As long as I have my health, my wife, and my daughter, everything else can be fixed. I've worked other jobs before, I can do it again. Bad times show you what really matters. And most of the time, it boils down to just existing and being with the people you care about. When we think about failure, we need to cultivate a healthy mindset. We tend to think of failure as a single, permanent thing, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Humans love to compartmentalize, but if you take the long view, failures are just little speed bumps over the course of a lifetime. Think back to something that seemed like the end of the world when you were a kid. Doesn't seem so bad today, does it? The benefit of hindsight will do a lot of heavy lifting. But there's no denying it. Sometimes the right now can suck. The most productive mindset we can have is one of resilience and determination. Our goal should be to build the best life we can for ourselves and our loved ones while realizing that we're not in control of everything. The world is a chaotic, unpredictable place, and trying to insulate yourself from challenges and failures is pretty much impossible. Let's try another story. Once upon a time, there was a spoiled kid from the suburbs who was just clever enough not to have to try very hard in school. He got a scholarship to a little private university and shipped off to another state, where he quickly realized that there was no one to force him to do his homework, or even show up to class. That semester, he earned a 1.67 GPA. He lost his scholarship, and he was at risk of getting kicked out. How's that for a failure? Kid starts out with a great trajectory and finds himself on the precipice of completely wrecking it. One more bad grade would have sealed the deal. So what does he do? He doesn't wallow, he has some hard conversations, fixes his perspective, and ends up graduating on time with good grades three years later. At the time, that crushing fear of screwing up so badly that I was about to get kicked out of school felt like the end of the world. But today, 12 years and many failures later, it just looks like a blip on the timeline. I've started and scrapped at least three other channels that never went anywhere. I quit a sales job two months in because I couldn't handle it. I've failed more times than I care to admit. But each of those failures has taught me something, either about how the world works, or more importantly, about myself. And because of those periods of adversity, I'm better equipped to handle larger challenges when they arise. I still get stuck in negativity spirals sometimes, but that's just part of being human. I'm able to acknowledge the feeling, let it simmer for a bit, 
then let it go and figure out a path forward. It doesn't have to be the ideal path forward. You don't have to be certain it's the right one. You just need to keep moving and see where your story takes you. Eventually, after what is hopefully a long and fulfilling life, you can look back through all the chapters and smile and shake your head at how apocalyptic each of those challenges felt at the time. And by that time, I hope you'll realize that you're not a failure. You never were. You're you. Just like everyone else is whoever they are. You are not defined by your failures or your successes. You're defined by how you respond to all of life's events and what you choose to consider important. So don't be afraid of failure. Embrace it for what it is, and let it add to the richness of your life story.